Welcome to this workshop on routing and network analysis in ArcGIS Online using web services. I am Dilesh Mandloy, and helping me today is my colleague Max. Uh, both of us work in the network analyst development team out of our Redlands office. And before we get started, just to get a good idea of what kind of audience we have, how many of you here have already used network analyst? Okay, so pretty much more than half, so that's good. And how about ArcGIS Online? How many of you have used ArcGIS Online? Okay, that's again more than half. And how many, I guess, the remaining folks are trying to figure out what this buzz about ArcGIS Online is? Yes? Okay, so before we start, what I would like to point out is all the slides as well as the demos that we'll be showing in this workshop are available right now at this URL. So they will be on the conference proceeding side, but that takes about three to four weeks for them to go up there. If you want to access all of these slides right now or uh, immediately afterwards, this is the URL. I'll pause for a few seconds so whoever is taking a picture can complete that. Good. I see one more camera. That's good. <laughs> so what are we going to cover today? We are going to see what are the ArcGIS Online uh, Network Analysis Services, uh, what are their capabilities. Uh, once we learn about their capabilities, we'll see how we can access those services using out-of-the-box apps. And then finally, uh, we will see how you can manage credits as you start using these services. Uh, we'll wrap up with some of the resources for you, and then we'll open up with questions. So what are ArcGIS Online services? So here we are talking about ArcGIS Online routing and network analysis services. So these are ready-to-use services hosted by Esri. Now what do I mean by that? So these are services that you can use without any data that you host yourself for to doing the network analysis or without requiring any ArcGIS server or ArcGIS enterprise on which you can run these services. So these that's why they are ready to use. You have to come with your ArcGIS online subscription and you can start using them. Esri manages these services in our own cloud. We update the data ourselves. We update the software ourselves. So all you have to, all you have to do is uh, come with your input data, that is your points and other stops, and you can use these services and uh, get your work done. And uh, ArcGIS Online provides other services which do mapping and other types of spatial analysis. So routing and network analysis is just one set of services that are included as part of your ArcGIS Online subscription. So what are these routing services? So uh, Network analysis services uh, consist of these seven different types of services, and I'm going to describe each of these services in a bit more detail, but uh, before we uh, go into that detail, I'll show you a small demonstration on how these services can be used and what they are. So here I am, again, the link to this page is in the slides, and this is our features page that we put to describe all of these services, so I'm just making use of that. So the first service that we have is the uh, the routes and the direction service. So what this does is it allows you to generate a route between one or more stops in the, in, a, in, in the sequence that you specify. So here you can see I've generated a standard route. There's also an option to generate an optimized route. What this does is instead of finding the route in the sequence of the stops that you have specified, the service will find out the optimal sequence in which you need to visit those stops and then give you the route in that optimal sequence and that actually uh, saves you on travel time and distance. So as you can see here, in, in, in the bottom here, it says distance saved is 10.9 miles and time saved is about 26%, which is 31 minutes. So by optimizing the sequence, or letting the service optimize the sequence, you get a more uh, better route. And here it's also avoiding this red point, which is that intersection probably has an accident and it's closed, so the route is actually not going through that. So those are also some of the capabilities that uh, we have when you're finding the route. The next one is a traffic service. So this is not really an analysis service, but more of a data visualization service where you can go anywhere in the world and uh, have this as a background image, and it shows how the traffic varies given uh, based on your current time. So the red, orange, and uh, green lines will show whether the traffic is free-flowing or it's uh, moderate or it's congested, along with the traffic incident. So there could be one or more points that say there's a construction here or there's an accident here. So this acts as a good base map layer on top of which you can draw your other analysis results. 
So the next service is the drive time service or service area service. This service allows you to find one or more, uh, find areas that you can reach from one or more facilities. So for here, I am in uh, London. If I change this to say New York, so this is 15 minutes uh, drive time what I can reach or if I change this to walk area, so this is in 15 minutes walking time what I can reach. So this kind of gives you what is nearby my facility and what I can reach there. The next service we have is a closest facility service. This says, okay, from this green dot, out of all of these blue dots, what is my closest facility? What is the closest blue dot from that green dot? So this allows you to find one or more closest facilities from your starting location and as well as generate a route and driving directions to it. The next one is the route multiple vehicle. So let's say in this case you have seven deliveries to make and you have two trucks to make those deliveries. So how do you distribute your stops to the, to the truck? So let's say which, uh, how do you draw that orange line and how do you draw that green line? So that's what this service does. It would try to minimize the distance and the sequence in which you visit those green stops and in which you visit the orange stops along with a lot of other constraints. The next one is the location allocation service. So here you have like all the yellow dots which are the candidate locations for say a store and all the blue dots is the demand. So which is the most optimal location out of these four such that everyone is within five minutes of that store. So that's the kind of problem this uh, service can solve. Last one is an OD cost matrix where given a set of points, this service will find the travel time and distance between all the origins and all the destinations that you can use then for further analysis. So this was just a a, a simple interactive explanation. I'll have more details on the services in the subsequent slides. So as I was mentioning before, what do you need to use these services? Well, you need an ArcGIS online subscription along with service credits. You need, you need your analysis inputs such as your stops or your facilities or your origins or your destinations. And then you need some kind of app like Ar uh, ArcGIS Pro or ArcMap or MapHere or Business Analyst Online or ArcGIS Insight. So these are the things that you need to use these services. And then these are the things that you don't need to use these services. Now often users get confused or do I need a network analyst extension license to use these services? The answer to that is no. You only need service credit credits and a subscription, not a network analyst extension license. You don't even need your own street data. Uh, uh, the, the fact that these services are ready to use and Esri provides a street data on which this analysis is done. So you don't need to have any kind of street data. You don't need the ArcGIS server software which is used to run these services. You don't need the hardware. You don't need the staff to manage it. And that's what I was covering about the ready to use nature of these services. Now, I said Esri provides street data. So what kind of street data do we have? What is the quality of that street data? So here is a map along with the link to it, which uh, says for all over the world, what kind of coverage we have. Generally, the areas that are in dark green has the best possible coverage. And as the intensity of green goes down, the coverage also is not of a higher quality. But wherever we have good quality coverage, we have predictive and real-time traffic. So your analysis can make use of that traffic while we find the routes or we also have support for logistical attributes like what is the clearance on a particular street and if the clearance is not high enough will not let you route through that street so that kind of data is already available yeah was there any question no okay so thanks or you can also say i want to find routes for uh, routing hazardous goods so that kind of information is there or only use streets that are designated as preferred truck routes so that is there and all of this is modeled using travel modes of which we provide driving walking and trucking but we also have the ability to create your own travel modes and max is going to show this in a demonstration in a few minutes time so how do you access these services? As I was saying, you need ArcGIS online subscription, but let's say you want to try and evaluate if these services are good fit for you, then you can always sign up for a uh, trial uh, ArcGIS online trial subscription which comes with a certain number of service credits and that way you can then evaluate these and then if these services work for you, you can go ahead and buy a full-on subscription. If you are already an ArcGIS uh, desktop or ArcGIS Pro user, that license entails you for an ArcGIS online subscription also. So do talk to your Esri account representative if you already don't have an ArcGIS online subscription. You're probably already eligible for it without paying anything and then all you would have to manage is the service credits to uh, use these services. 
So now how do you, let's say you have an ArcGIS online subscription, how do you go ahead and access these services? So these services are accessible through a lot of the out of the box apps. So like ArcGIS Pro, ArcMap and uh, Mapier and the analysis tool, uh, in the, in the map your application. Now some of these services are also available in some of the other apps like these services are kind of basic platform services and all the other Esri apps try to use them wherever it makes sense. Like Insights for ArcGIS would use it, Collector would use it, Navigator could use it. So all the different apps can, uh, can use it. You can also build your own apps using the ArcGIS runtime and the web SDKs. If you are a developer or there are developers in your organization then they can use the APIs and the SDKs that Esri provides provides which will allow them to use these services in your own apps. So now we'll see how you can use these services in the three important out of the box apps which is ArcGIS Pro, ArcMap and the Map Your application. So in ArcGIS Pro you can access these services two ways. You can go to ready to use tools and then access these as geoprocessing services or you can go to the network an analysis gallery within the analysis ribbon and from there you can select uh, or use these services. If you are in ArcMap, you can connect to your portal, to your ArcGIS online organization, and then within ready to use tools, you will see these services available as geoprocessing tools. If you are in Mapier, Mapier is the browser-based application which is what you go when, which is what you get when you go to ArcGIS.com. If you are in the Mapier, there is a directions button which uses the routing service, and then there are analysis tools uh, under use proximity tool set and some other uh, and some other tools in another tool set which allows you to access these services. Now, when you try to use the services in a map here, like most people are comfortable with ArcMap or ArcGIS Pro and bringing in data, like say you have a shape file of your stops and you want to, you want to find a route between them. So in ArcMap and ArcGIS Pro, it's a desktop application, you know how to bring in your shape file. But let's say you are doing this in a browser-based application like map here. So how do you get your shape file into map here? Or how do you get your CSV file with addresses into Mapier so that you can then run analysis on it? So this is where some people get uh, tripped up and that's why I had this slide. So Mapier has many different ways to bring your uh, data into Mapier. Like if you have a shape file, you can zip it up, create a zip file, and then you can add that zip file into Mapier and it will create your points as a layer in the Mapier and on that layer you can run the analysis. Similarly, if you have a CSV file with addresses, you can drag and drop that CSV file, you can geocode that using the Esri geocoding service and then that will convert that CSV into points as a point layer and then you can run your analysis on that point layer. Also I would like to mention is these services use Esri's own street data. So if you want to use your own street data with these services then that's not possible in ArcGIS Online. However, if you know that you have to go down that path then you can always use ArcGIS Enterprise with your own street data, publish all of these services yourself and then you can use the same apps, uh, Mapier, ArcGIS Pro and ArcMap to use the services which are running based on your own street data. But that is the aspect that we are not going to talk about in this workshop. Here we are just talking about how you use these services as available in ArcGIS Online. But if for some reason you cannot use ArcGIS Online, keep in mind that the exact same functionality is also available as part of ArcGIS Enterprise. So now let's look at these services in slightly more detail. So first is the traffic service. So this allows you to visualize the traffic speeds uh, and as well as the traffic incidents. So this acts as a good operational layer on which you can show your analysis results. Say for example, you're finding a route and it's not using the typical streets that you would uh, think that it should take. If you add this traffic layer, you might see that yes, there is congestion and that's why we have found a different route. So it acts as a good reference layer for your data and this, the traffic service is backed by Esri's uh, data feed which is updated every five minutes. So the data is updated every five minutes and uh, we do that uh, throughout the day. So how do you use the traffic service? In ArcGIS Pro you go under the catalog pane, within that you go on the living atlas tab and then search for traffic and you can get the traffic, uh, traffic layer added. So if similarly in the map here you, it is under the living atlas category. In ArcMap if you connect to ready to use services node you can see the traffic layer and you can add that in your display. Now I'm going to show this three ways of accessing every service through this, this apps for all of the services. 
Next is the route service. Here we have two variants as I was showing in that earlier demonstration. We have simple route which is finding the route in the sequence that you specify or optimized route which is also optimizing the sequence in which you need to be visiting. Along with that you can use traffic or you can generate driving directions in many different languages. We support about 39 different languages in which you can support uh, the directions. How do you use it? If you are in Pro, you can use the ready to use tools in Pro or from the network analysis gallery, you create a route layers when your network data source is ArcGIS online and then that uh, layer will allow you to run the analysis based on the service. From ArcMap, you can either use the ready to use tool find routes or within the, uh, the find toolbar, there is a find routes button which also allows you to use this in ArcMap. If you are in the map your application, you can use the directions button or you can use the connect origins to destinations analysis tool which also allows you to, uh, to run, uh, to use this route service. So now I'll hand over to Max who will show us a demonstration on how you can use the route service with custom travel modes. Max? Cool. Thank you, Dilesh. So for this time I will show you how you can find a route on ArcGIS Online using the map your directions widget. And I also want to focus on showing you how you can use travel mode to model your vehicle and how this travel mode is going to affect your result. So here I opened my map viewer, opened a web map, sending it to my ArcGIS Online account. And the reason I opened to this web map is I want to show you this interesting intersection here in Durham, North Carolina. And if we zoom into this intersection, we can see this intersection is under a railroad bridge and this is how it looks like. Uh, this is not a typical intersection you will encounter, so every year lots of trucks crash under this bridge because the clearance is so low, and so the, the, the bridge gets a nickname, the can opener. So now we, let's try to find a route to avoid the crash. So first let's see how we can find a route using a directions widget. Click directions button, it opens the directions pane on the left side. You can type in the address to find route from A to B, or you can, in this case, we just want to find a route from these two intersections. So here is this our route. And we can see the travel mode currently is using, it's called driving time travel mode. This models how a regular vehicle travels on the network. And the regular vehicle isn't tall enough to crash, so it's safe to travel underneath. But what if you have a tow truck, it's, if it were to take this route, it's going to crash. And to solve this problem, if you are an administrator on your organization, you can create travel, custom travel mode to model your vehicle. So go to home, go to organization. You can only do this if you are an administrator. Or an administrator in your organization can set it up. So you have settings. And uh, on the left side, you were able to configure some of the settings of organization. And the settings we want to change is utility services. And scroll down to the bottom, we have the directions and routing services settings and click configure travel modes. So here you can see lots of uh, predefined travel mode that is available out of the box, which mostly uh, models how a regular pedestrian, a regular vehicle or a truck travels on the network. Now we have the trucking travel time, we can make our own version of it. We can click the copy button to make our copy of this trucking travel time, uh, trucking time travel mode. So let's call it trucking time tall truck. So here, these are all the travel mode settings you can set on this travel mode. Here is an important one. This impedance is when it's trying to find a route, it's trying to minimize something when it's trying to find a route. And this impedance attribute is what it's trying to minimize. And this U-turn policy models how your vehicle can do U-turn. So for our truck, we do not want it to do U-turn at all because it's not very safe. And the one interesting attribute I want to show you here is this height restriction. We can click this apply checkbox to apply this height restriction. And we can specify our vehicle height to be four meters. So this essentially tells the service that our vehicle is four meters. So if any route that doesn't have this kind of clearance, do not return this part of the route. And one more interesting attribute I want to show you here is this truck travel time attribute, which is also used as our impedance attribute. So this truck tra travel time attribute have a parameter called vehicle maximum speed. So this is useful if your truck have, a, for example, a governing device that your truck cannot go over 50 miles per hour. So when the so service is trying to find your route, 
instead of using the maximum speed on the route, it's also taking consideration of the maximum speed that the vehicle is allowed to travel, so that when it's calculating the time, it's more accurate. So let's exaggerate the result by giving it 10 kilometers per hour to make our truck really, really slow. And let's save the travel mode and save our settings. And what it's doing right now, it's creating a new travel mode in your organization. So anytime you connect into ArcGIS Online to solve your routing problem, you can use the travel mode that's configured in your organization. And let's go back to our map and see how we can find a route using the new travel mode that we made. So still, in this intersection, open directions button. We can switch our travel mode to the new one that we made, trucking time, tr tall truck. And let's still find a route from A to B. OK, so this is our route. So instead of traveling underneath, it's taking this detour to avoid the crash. And also, you can see here, it's taking only 1.5 kilometers. This, this, this route is only 1.5 kilometers, but it's taking 10 minutes because it's considering my maximum vehicle speed to be 10 kilometers per hour. That's why it's taking nine minutes to report the time to you. So this tells you, okay, uh, if you have those kind of vehicles that have those maximum speed, this helps you to um, realistically understand how, many, how much time it takes from A to B. And also here, you can see it's not taking this part of the route, but nearly it's shorter, and we can see why. We can zoom into this area. We can see this is a one-way street against our direction. So this one-way information is also built into our travel mode. And when it's trying to find a route, it's going to obey our one-way uh, restrictions as well. So this demo shows you how you can find a route and how you can use uh, like travel mode to model your vehicle and how it's going to affect your result. Back to you, Dilesh. Thanks, Max. So that was an interesting example of, yes, we do routing, but you can also customize that routing to fit your needs and the kind of vehicles that you usually route. Next is the closest facility service. So this allows you to find one or more locations that are closest from a given location. So for example, let's say there's an accident and you want to dispatch the three closest police cars that are within five minutes of that accident. This service can find out what are those three police cars and then would also for generate a route and directions to reach that accident location. Now, along with specifying the number of locations to find and the cutoff value, you can also specify the direction of travel. In this example, you're dispatching police cars to the incident. So the direction of travel is from the facilities, which are your police cars, to the incident, which is your accident location. Let's flip that scenario. Let's say now you want to go from the accident location to the three closest hospitals. In that case, your hospitals would be facilities, your incident would be your accident location, but the direction of travel is from incident to the facilities. Now, why is that important? Because as Max was showing, the one-way streets could be different in different directions. But for emergency, maybe one way doesn't matter that much. The emergency vehicles can go anywhere, but for some other scenarios, that does make a difference. So you might get a completely different route depending on the travel direction. Also, this service, like the route service, supports traffic, so it will find all the routes using the traffic uh, uh, that is prevailing for that particular instance of time. Again, how do you use this service? In Pro, you have the ready-to-use tools or the from the analysis gallery. In ArcMap, you have ready-to-use tools. And within the map here, there is an analysis tool called Find Nearest, which essentially uses this service behind the scenes to so that you can find from one location what is uh, closest to, uh, uh, to that location. Next is the service area, or often called as drive time service, but I think that's a misnomer because it's not just about drive time. The service can do walking, trucking, driving, all those different modes. So this service allows you to find out what you can reach from one or more facilities given a time or a distance cutoff. So let's say you have stores, you want to find out all the area that you can reach within 15 minutes of driving time. Or you have bus stops, all the areas that can be reached within 10 minutes of walking time from all of your bus stops. So that's the kind of analysis that you can do. You can specify multiple values, like you can say five, 10, 15 minutes, or you can just say 15 minutes. You can also specify different options, like do you want rings or disks? So rings would be when you go from uh, 5, 10, 15, it would be 0 to 5 would be one polygon, and then 5 to 10 will be another polygon, but that will not cover 0 to 5. 
but if you do disks, you will get three polygons, but zero to five would be same, but uh, uh, five to 10 will cover actually everything from zero up to 10. So it's uh, either the entire uh, break values or just the, uh, the cutoffs that you specify. And again, you can specify the direction of travel as well as traffic. Direction of travel would be like whether I'm traveling from my facility and away from the facility or I'm traveling towards the facility. And traffic would be interesting. So a service area at 8 a.m. from your store or might be completely different than 2 p.m. because of the traffic condition. The 8 a.m. service area might be quite smaller. The 2 p.m. service area might be slightly bigger than that. Again, for uh, using these, you can use these three apps from Pro, from Mapier, or from ArcMap. So now I'll hand it over to Max, who will show how you can use this service in ArcGIS Pro. Cool. Thank you, Dilesh. So for this demo, I will pretend I work as a GS and it like, works for a multi-nation corporation that does most of their um, analysis, their operation in North America and Europe, but sometimes they will do it in other regions as well. So here, they are trying to expand to India, and these are the three uh, store locations they are looking at and want to figure out what is the accessibility to their stores. And the stores uh, dispatch uh, medical equipment to their nearest health centers. So essentially, they want to figure out within 15, 30, 45, and 60 minutes of drive time, how many health centers are within each of the store area. So as I have said, this corporation mostly does their analysis in North America and Europe. They have data for those regions, but they do not have data for the India. So this is a perfect case where we, you will use ArcGIS Online to solve your problem. So we have the data globally, so you can use ArcGIS Online to solve the problem that you do not have data for. But for other regions, that if you already have your data, you can re revert back to your local data to solve. So here, I'm using ArcGIS Pro, and I send you to my same account I sent into the uh, map viewer. And to solve a problem in ArcGIS Pro, we have this analysis, and we have this network analysis gallery. So click it. Here it shows you all the uh, analysis you can solve in ArcGIS Pro. And this network data source currently is ArcGIS Online. This shows you you are connecting to online service to solve your problem. If you were to solve using a local data, this is going to be a catalog pass to your local data. So now let's create a service area. So all the, sol all the network analysis in ArcGIS Pro is simple three steps. First, make a layer. Second, add locations to your layer. And third is to change some settings and then solve your problem. So now let's, we have already created our layer. Let's load our store locations into our service area layer. You click the service area analysis layer. There is a contextual tab here. So click it. Click import facilities. And we can import our store locations into our facilities layer. So now we have our store locations in the service area layer. We can change some settings, like the cutoff. We want to solve for 15, 30, 45, and 60 minutes of drive time. So let's run this analysis. So what it's doing right now, it's uploading all the data to ArcGIS Online, and it's doing the service area in ArcGIS Online using the data in India. And when it comes back the result, it can um, sim symbolize them in ArcGIS Pro. And so these are our area of um, our result area. And we can take a look at one of the particular facility here. So here is a 15, 30, 45, and 60 minutes drive time area around one of my store. And after I get my area, I want to do some other post processing to figure out how many health centers located within each of the area. And for that, I have all the health centers data in India, and it's in this layer. And I created a geoprocessing model to do this analysis. So let's take a look at this model. So this is my model. I did a spatial drawing from my output polygons right here to all the health centers. And essentially, it's figuring out how many health centers located within my, each of my polygons. And then it joins back the, uh, the result back to my polygons as a new field on it. So let's run this analysis. So after it's finished, we can see it creates a new field on my polygon called join count. So essentially, it's telling you 
within each of the polygon, how many health centers are within this polygon. And we can even do a chart to visualize this data more intuitively. So right click on the polygon, you can click create chart and create a bar chart for it, for example. And for the categories, we are using our polygons, the name of my polygon, and we, did, we don't need to do any aggregation. And for the numeric field, I'm using the join count. So here is my chart. And I can also, since we are doing the presentation, so we can only show like the chart for this current extent. So we can click the filter by extent button. So it will only show me the chart for the polygon that is currently within my um, map view extent. And the chart and the polygons are actually linked. So if I click this polygon, it's going to highlight the area where it, okay, this is my uh, 15 to 30 minutes drive time area. And this is how the area looks like. And this is how many health centers are within this area. So this demo shows you how you can solve your analysis problem within ArcGIS Pro and to solve this kind of coverage problem using the service area layer. And after you find this polygon, you can do some post, um, post processing to figure out some other information. Back to you, Dilesh. Yeah, thanks, Max. So these services are something that you can just think of an extended toolbox that you get to uh, use them along with other tools that ArcGIS, uh, ArcGIS Pro already provides. The next service is the vehicle routing problem service. This is an interesting service. It's used by a lot of different logistics companies. So this allows you to find routes for a fleet of vehicles. So it's not just the route service which only finds out one route, but let's say you have uh, five trucks and 50 orders. You want to figure out how to distribute work to those trucks. This service will do that for you. It's not just about distribution, but your trucks may have certain specialties, like say you're d delivering furniture, and certain uh, orders have certain time windows, like this delivery needs to happen during daytime, this delivery needs to happen during afternoon, so the service can take into account that. Or say your delivery requires a special equipment and only certain trucks can have that kind of equipment, you can also model that as an input to this service and it can create the route uh, for that. You can also have work breaks because your drivers need break or the drivers should not work for more than eight hours or if they work more than eight hours, you should start giving them overtime. So you can have all of these constraints feed to the service and the service will give you the routes as well as the directions to uh, follow those routes. How you can use this service in ArcGIS Pro, the, this service can be used from the ready to use tools there is Solve Vehicle Routing Problem tool. Unlike the other solvers or services that we have seen so far, this service is currently not yet available from the network analysis gallery like Mac showed, creating a new service area analysis layer. There is no creating a new vehicle routing problem layer. That's something we are working on and hopefully in the next release, we'll have that functionality available. So for now, you have to go to ready to use tools and then access this service. Within ArcMap, again, you have this access to the same ready to use tool and you can use it. If you are in the Map Your application, we have a planned routes analysis tool, which is a really a simple and easy tool to use, but allows you to solve quite a powerful set of analysis. And it, uh, it makes use of this vehicle routing problem service behind the scenes. The, la uh, the Next service is the origin destination cost matrix service. This service allows you to find the time and the distance from all your origins to all your destinations. It's only finding time and distance and not the actual route shapes. So that way this service can scale to a much bigger inputs as compared to the route service. Uh, it draws straight lines between origins and destination, but it's not using the straight line distance. It's still calculating travel time and travel distance, but not calculating the true shapes. You can also specify a cutoffs, instead of finding all to all, you can say, no, no, only find me the destinations that are within five minutes of my origins, or only find me three closest destinations. So this is uh, very useful. Say you are a healthcare provider and you want to see from each patient address what are the three closest healthcare providers, what are the time and the distance to them. This is often used by health agencies for compliance reasons, and this service is a good fit for that. You are not interested in the actual uh, route that is taken, but you only are interested in the time and distance. So whenever you have that as a requirement, you should think of using this service. 
to use this service in uh, ArcGIS Pro, there is it, it's in the analysis gallery or in the ready to use tools or even in ArcMap, you have this under ready to use tools. Currently in the map here, there is no analysis tool that makes use of this service. But if you think of a workflow that you have in your mind, which would be suitable for map here and would make use of this service, let us know through ideas.arcgis.com and we can think about adding that. Last is the location allocation service. Again, this is an interesting service. It allows you to find facilities that meet some kind of demand. Let's say you have five existing stores and you have budget to open two new stores. So how do you select those two new stores such that you maximize the customers coming to your stores. Now you may have uh, selected 10 different store locations, but from those 10 locations, you have to use two. So how do you use those, uh, choose those two best facilities? You can use this service. Uh, you can uh, have many different other problem types that you can solve with this. Like an example is, let's say you don't want to open any new stores. You want to figure out which of the stores you should close because they're just redundant. They don't improve the accessibility of the customers. So again, this service can help you find that. Like to reach 95% market share, how many stores do you need? Probably you need only five. So this service will tell you which of those five stores you could use so that you will cover the maximum demand. Again, you can use this from Pro or from ArcMap or within MapPure, there is a choose best facilities analysis tools which has different problem types broken out and uh, it's slightly more easier to use. And I'll hand it over to Max who will show us how you can use this choose best facilities tool and do an analysis that cites flu clinics. Max. Cool, thank you, Dinesh. So for this demo, I'm back in the MapPure and I'm going to do a location and location analysis. And for the context, I work for the uh, county health department. And for this year's flu season, I want to figure out where should I open the health clinics for people to go there and get their flu shot. So for last year, we have these eight existing health clinics that they are, uh, people already go there and get their immunization. And for this year, I have budget to open four new health clinics. And where should I sell them? And for that type of question, I'm thinking maybe I can open four new health clinics within the library area because uh, I think people are familiar with their nearest library. And out of the 20, I want to open four new health clinics as mobile health clinics. And for the population, I'm using the census block group centroid, which are the orange dots on the map. So to, to do a location allocation in MapUR, we go to analysis. We have this fan locations. We have the choose best facilities tool. And first, it's asking you what is your goal for your analysis. So the first goal is to allocate to existing facilities. This is, for example, you have your demands, you have your facilities. Which demands should be assigned to which facility? This is just allocating existing demands to your facilities. This is not our goal. We just we don't just want to allocate our citizens to their health clinics. We also want to figure out where should we open the new health clinics. So I wouldn't pick this one. Minimize travel will help you to set your uh, facility so that the, the total travel distance between your demand and the facility is minimized. This is part of my goal, but this is not my um, real goal here. The maximum coverage sounds very promising because I want just to want to reach as much population as possible. For the next one, maximum coverage with capacity. So along with maximum the coverage, if you have some capacity constraints on your facility, for example, if it's a hospital that can only host certain number of patients, or if it's a school that can only host a certain number of students, then you have some capacity constraints on your facility. So along with maximum coverage, we'll also uh, consider those capacity constraints and do not overload your facility. But here, my health clinics just have as much like medicine as possible so they can serve as much population as they want so I wouldn't pick this one as well. And then for the next one, we have the cover a percent of demand. So instead of telling the service that I want to open four new health clinics, where should I open them? I will just tell the service that I want to cover 90% of my demand and within 10 minutes of drive time, where should I, how many facilities should I open and where should I set them? 
So the service is going to return me, okay, you might need to open this eight or seven uh, locations uh, here and there, but I don't have the budget for all of those, so I'm not going to pick this goal as well. So for my problem, I'm going to use maximum coverage. So the first one is still the travel mode. I think people are driving to my uh, facility, so I'm using the driving time travel mode. And people are driving from their home to my facility, so the travel direction, I'm picking the uh, demand to facility. For the demand locations, I'm using the census block group points. And there is a field called population that uh, shows how many population within each of the census block group. And for the maximum travel range, I'm thinking that people should be within 10, 15 minutes of drive time to my house clinics. For the required facility, I'm using the house clinics, the eight house clinics here that we opened last year, we still want to open this year as well. So I'm picking those eight. And of the candidate facilities, I'm picking from the libraries. We have 20 libraries here, and we want to pick four of them to open. So give it a unique name. Maybe health clinics 2019, and run this analysis. So what it's doing right now is still sending the data to ArcGIS Online and then process this location allocation problem. It's going to take a couple seconds. So in the meanwhile, let me show you some other analysis tools we have. So still in the analysis tab, we have under summarized data, we'll have the summarized nearby. So for example, you want to figure out how many libraries are within my health clinics within like a, um, five minutes of drive time area. This is, the, this is using the, um, the drive time area and then figure out another data, how, how, many, how many points are located within my drive time area for my facility. And if you still remember my first demo, I created a tracking time tow truck, so you can still use that travel mode as well across all the other um, apps that use ArcGIS Online. So we have the majority tool actually under use proximity. We have the create drive time area tool which help you to visualize, for example, a 15 uh, minutes drive time area around my facility. We have the find nearest tool help you to find the nearest store or find the nearest restaurant. Plan routes tool help you do, do a simple vehicle routing problem to help you to route a fleet of vehicles. And connect origins to destinations help you to find routes between origins and destinations. So our result seems to come back and let's uh, take a look at it. So here is my result. And we can see from the legend right here, we can see this green square represents the ones that we picked this year. And the green diamonds are the ones that we have from last year. The red square represents the ones that we don't pick this year. Those are the libraries that we don't pick. And uh, there are still some red dots here. These are the census block sensoids that essentially cannot be served by any of the health clinics. And the reason is because, if you still remember, we set a cutoff on our service. It's 15 minutes of drive time. So essentially, this is telling me that uh, for these areas, there is no facility that is within 15 minutes of drive time. So here's my result, and we can look at this area. So instead of picking this um, libraries, it's picking this one because it just can attract the largest demand. So now we have our uh, health clinics we want to open this year. Maybe I want to create an app for, the, for our citizen to figure out from their home where is their nearest health clinics. So for that, I could uh, build a, easily build a web app from my web map. So let's first turn off all the layers that are irrelevant. And we want to, uh, so this is only my house uh, clinics we are going to open this year. And we can apply a filter on it. Essentially it's telling it, only show me the uh, facility that has an allocated demand greater than zero. That means only show me the facilities that we pick this year. So these are the 12 locations we are going to pick this year. These are the existing ones, these are the new ones. And we can save our web map. And next, I can click share to share my web map. And I can click create a web app to create a web app from my web map. 
So there are three options you can create a new app, and the easiest way is configurable application templates. Under configuration application templates, we have the route and get directions. We have the directions template. So this directions temp we can click directions template, click create web app, and leave everything as default. Let's see, fine. And now it's going to open this web application in the configuration mode. And we can change some settings on our app and how it looks like. So this is my app. It's taking a little bit of time to load. So this is the 12 locations we are trying to find where is the nearest one from my location. And here we have the general tab. And these two settings I will come back a little bit later. For the theme, you can change the color for your, uh, the theme of your app. And for the destination layer, the destination layer we want to pick is the health clinics we are going to open this year. And then we have the distance units. You can change between uh, returning distance using miles or kilometers. And this is an important checkbox. If you do not check the use quality facility to improve the accuracy of the distance calculation, so by default, it's going to use the uh, Euclidean distance to figure out where is your uh, nearest one. But if you want to use network distance to be more accurate, you can click on this checkbox to use a closed facility service to figure it out. But using a closed facility is going to consume some credits. And when we return the results, the raw, the raw service is going to consume some credits as well. So that's why we have the general tab. We have these two checkboxes. So it really depending on how you want to use this app. If you want to share this app to within your organization, or if you want to share this app to a bunch of people who have their ArcGIS online, then you probably just don't need these checkboxes. You can just give this app to them. And then when they start this app, it's going to pop up asking you to sign in. And then the credits is going to be deducted from your customer. But now, if this is, a, this is like a public facing app, then your customers, like citizens, they probably don't have access online account. So when you check these checkboxes, it's essentially telling our system that all the credits is going to be consumed from the app creator, which is you. And we can also, you can also set some request limit and intervals to help um, the, to help um, that the public does, doesn't just uh, abuse your service. So this is how these two checkboxes is used uh, for you. So we can launch this app, and this is how my app looks like. And uh, we can type in an address for, to figure out where is my nearest health clinics. So maybe I was in World of Coca-Cola, and after my tour, for whatever reason, I want to go to the health clinics. <laughs> and here is, it tells me this is my nearest health clinic. And this is returning my uh, driving direction. And it also returns me like the walking direction. So this demo shows you how you can use the Choose Best Facilities tool to find the best location to open um, the next best location to open the new facility, and how easy it is to turn your web map into a web app and that your users can just use to figure out where is my nearest location. So back to you, Dilesh. Thanks, Max. So that was pretty powerful. Think about it. You are just using a browser. You have an ArcGIS online subscription. You are able to do a sophisticated network analysis that was citing locations. And then you are able to build an app so that people can consume your analysis results all without writing any code. And what Max didn't show is that you can get that app link and even tweet it on your county's website. So that's how easy it can be to get your results, do your analysis and get your results in the actual hands of people who can make use of that. So now in, in summary, these are all the different services that we saw. And here are the services on the top. And on the column, we have the three apps that we were seeing, MapPure, ArcGIS Pro, and ArcMap, and where all you can see this. So as I was telling you, the vehicle routing problem service cannot be currently used from the analysis gallery, and that's something coming soon. OD cost matrix is not available in the MapPure. The good old ArcMap can uh, actually access all of the services. So finally, uh, as Max was hinting at, all these services require credits. So whenever you run a service, depending on what service it is and what type of problem you're solving, credits will be deducted. So how do you know what, uh, what 
credits are going to be deducted. So here is a table with all the services and all the credits that are required. I've also provided a link which gives you more details into how this thing works and how you can even estimate the number of credits that would be required for your analysis. Uh, one thing that's important to note is the traffic service which is used to visualize does not require any credits. So that's why in this chart I've put it as a zero credits. Now, how do you monitor this uh, use of the credits? Say you're an administrator in your ArcGIS Online organization. So ArcGIS Online has tools that allows you to visualize this credit consumption by app or by users. So let's say you have 10 users in your organization who are using these services. You can get user by user report saying user A used 10 credits and these are the services across which they use those 10 credits and so on. So that way you can get an idea on who is consuming which service and how many credits they are using as part of those services. Now let's say if you say, okay, these services consume credits, is there a way to control how people can access this? Because I don't want everyone in my organization to be able to use this service and that way they could accidentally use credits that they should not be using. So there are a couple of ways. One way is ArcGIS Online provides a way to allocate credits. So you can say out of say 2000 credits that you have in your organization, this user A can only use 20 credits. So, as, uh, so they can do analysis as long as they have credits, but once they run out of credits, they will not be allowed to do any analysis, then they come to you as an administrator and you allocate them more credits. So this gives you more control over who can use the credits and how many credits they can use. The next way is to grant a network analysis privilege. So along with the credits, to use all of those services, the named user also needs to have this network analysis privilege. By default, every user has this privilege, but as an administrator, you can create a custom role and take away this privilege. So that way you can say, okay, I have a group of analysts who usually work with the routing problems, so I am going to only assign this privilege to only those group of users. So that way anyone else in my organization cannot even access these services, and only the people whom I want to can access the services. So you can use this privilege, plus the credit budget allocation to really control how people are using it and how many credits they are using it. So finally, some of the resources. So the three apps that we talked about, these, this is detailed documentation on how you could be using the different uh, apps to uh, use these services. And finally, uh, take a few minutes of your time and please fill out this survey on the Esri Events app. Helps us to improve this session when we offer it in future. And uh, once again, this is the URL on which you can download the slides and all the data that Max showed in his demonstration. And now we'll open up for questions. Yeah, question. Um, I have two questions. Go ahead. Yes or no question. There used to be a drive time generalized polygon option. Okay. Yeah, so the question is, there used to be a generalized option in drive time, is it still available? And the answer is yes. Okay. Yeah. The second one is, uh, if we, uh, um, I worked in the rail industry and we often had to have uh, trucks that go from some location to a location on the track through a crossing. Yeah. So this is basically, it's multimodal, but the uh, infrastructure is like this, like I'm trying to combine roads with rail in order to make it one network. Yeah. Is it possible? Yeah, so the question is, uh, is it possible to do routing using multiple modes like uh, streets and rails in this case? The answer is yes, but not using the ArcGIS online services. In this case, you'll have to create your own network data set that models streets and rails, and network data set does support multimodal routing that way. Then publish the same set of services to your own instance of ArcGIS Enterprise, and then you will be able to use the same applications. Like you can use the map here, then once you have these services published on ArcGIS Enterprise, you would be able to use map here and then run the same kind of analysis that Max was doing. Not with ArcGIS Online, but with ArcGIS Enterprise. That's the answer for you. Uh, 
Yes, so the question is if you buy the network analyst extension in ArcGIS Pro, does it cover all the functionality that is available in ArcGIS Online? And the answer is yes. With network analyst extension, you are working with local data, local street data. And this option is really if you don't have street data and if you don't have the network analyst extension, then this is the alternative way to access the same functionality. But they cover the same thing, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Can we the yes, so the question is, instead of roads, if you have uh, tracks. tracks, then can you do the same analysis? Yes, it's the main idea there would be you have to model that into a network data set. And then once you have that network data set, you can use ArcGIS Pro the same way that Max was using. You set your data source to be your local network data set, and then you can run the same set of analysis. And you can even, uh, you can run that data locally or you can publish that data to your own ArcGIS enterprise. So that way you get services and then instead of using that data locally, you're actually using services which are in your own ArcGIS enterprise environment. So, so also you do Yeah, so okay, uh, the question is, can we do customizations? My follow-up question to that is what uh, do you have any specific customization in mind? Sure. Uh, to uh, optimize uh, uh, delay, yeah. like if you have two trains that are coming on the same track, um, they're not going to be able to cross each other. Yeah. So if you put one of them on a parallel track and allow the other one to go through and then this to go through. Yeah. So th th this is just an example of yeah. two trains, but when you have five trains and multiple tracks, the problem becomes a little more complicated. Don't have obviously out of the box. Yes, yeah. So uh, uh, one way, so the question is how do you model delay in terms of trains when you want to uh, say two trains are passing, you want to put them on parallel track. I'm repeating because this is recorded and so people can get it. So the question, the answer is yes, we don't have the detailed train modeling software in ArcGIS, but what you can achieve with what we have is something like when you do a route, for each stops, you can specify what is the wait time on the stops. So that essentially models in terms of street scenario, that models like a service time. So let's say you're making deliveries and when you reach a stop, you take 30 minutes to finish your delivery and then you move on to the next stop. So how do you model that 30 minutes is by putting a, a value called 30 minutes as a service time on that stop. And then when we do actual routing, it will say, okay, the total time is, let's say the travel time was 10 minutes and the wait time was 30 minutes. The total time for that route would be 40 minutes. So that would be one way. It's a simple way. It's not taking into account a lot of different things. But let's say if you can simplify your scenario to be a number that you can come up with, then you can put that when you're finding the route and it will use that number when it's doing the total time calculation. Yeah, so it is not, uh, uh, the, what we have are not deterministic. Okay. We are, these are reactive solutions. Yeah. Yeah, that is not, yeah, that is something that is not available in network analysis, yes. Okay. Yes, question. Yeah, um, the ability to route when we've got a, a time constraints, like delivery times for restaurants. Okay. Yeah, so the question is when you're doing route, you have time constraints like you need to make this delivery between 8 a.m. and 9 a.m. and bit, or between uh, 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. Do we support that? Yes, absolutely. So there are two solvers, the route uh, or two services. The route service supports time windows, but it only supports one time window per stop. But the vehicle routing problem service actually supports two time windows per stop. So that's where if you have like constraints where you have to support two time windows, either do the delivery in the morning time window or do it in the afternoon time window, you would use the vehicle routing problem service. But if you have just a single uh, time window, you can either use vehicle routing problem or you can use the route service. So yes, the options are there. And again, it depends on whether you're delivering multiple routes or you're just doing one route. So that would also decide whether you want to use the vehicle routing problem service or the route service. Yeah. One other thing on top of that, um, you uh, indicated that takes into consideration our uh, time delay based on security. So somebody's trying to get in a gate, uh, that's secure. Uh, do you have any uh, function in there that will allow for a time delay to be put in, like add another 30 seconds on for somebody to enter a key 
Yes, so the question is, is there a way to introduce a time delay for a security gate clearance and things like that? And yes, it would be the same idea that I was conveying before, is you have this service time modeled as that delay. You know? So that way, so let's say your gate is a point, and so anytime you want to cross this point, there's a delay of 30 seconds or there's delay of three minutes. So you can model it that way, and so when the route goes through that point, it will make sure that it includes that value in, in, in your total route, call, route time. Yeah, question. Can you import your stops like a CSV file? Yes, so the question is can you import your stops as a CSV file? Yes. Either in Pro or in Mapfure, yes, you can have a CSV file with either XY coordinates or even with addresses, and then the Mapfure application will geocode those and convert those into points, and then you can do all of these analysis on that. So yeah, and in fact, what Max showed in his flu clinics demo was he the locations, the library location and the healthcare clinics. He had CSV files for them with XY locations, and that's how he converted them into points. And then he was doing the analysis. Yeah. Is it possible to combine uh, You had the uh, you had the same uh, uh, the, the traffic system. Yes. So connect all the points uh, in this sequence, or find the best sequence. Yes. Yeah so, the, yeah, so the question is, can you combine the simple route and optimized route or, uh, and then throw in the time windows? And yes, that's, so what you're trying to do essentially there would be, I have all these stops to visit. Some of them have time windows, some of them don't have, and I want to figure out the best sequence to visit them honoring that time windows. And yes, the answer to that is yes. So. Thanks for attending and I think there are sessions till 5.30 today, so please enjoy the rest of the conference and then there are sessions tomorrow then. Yeah, thanks for attending. Thank you. Okay, thanks.